Hello everyone and welcome to Home Before Night screencast created by me, Miss Gontita. So today we're going to focus on the social setting of the novel Home Before Night by Hugh Leonard. Um, as I know that a lot of students find it very difficult to kind of know and understand where to start, what to include and what to write about. So what will you learn about in this screencast? So first of all we're going to look at what social setting is. Okay, then we're going to focus on some exam questions, which will be rephrased to make it a bit easier for you to understand. Um, of course, we're going to focus on the class distinction in the novel, because I think that is kind of the most important part of it. Um, of course, education and family, and particularly with children, which of course would be Jack himself. And then some quotes and chapters will be included for you as a guide along where to read something or focus on. Now, one thing that I thought would be quite important for you to include here is that remember Jack is born in 1926 in Ireland and he kind of rose up at a time of great turmoil okay so emergency and um, times in Ireland as well so that is something that will come up later okay so before we look at the social setting we need to quickly look over the exam okay so this screencast is for ordinary level leaving certificate students um we we're looking at comparative studies which will uh, which consists of 70 marks um so you should spend about 65 minutes or maybe 70 minutes on this particular section so you will get a question a and b question a um focus will only focus about um on kind of one text so pick the text that you know the best and include quotations now question B, you will need to compare or write about two texts in the same essay. So my tip here is that you always need to use connectors in question B. So for example, if you're writing about the social um, setting of the two texts that you've learned about, you either need to decide if they're similar or if they're different. If they're similar, you use connectors such as similarly. But if they're very different, you will say unlike, however, nevertheless, also. So things like that will, you will need to include in the exam to show your examiner that you know what you're doing and that you're able to compare. So let's look at what social setting stands for. Okay, so first of all, you need to remember that a lot of students do get confused about it. However, um, really social setting means, you know, that you need to explore the world of the text. So know the time period and what was happening in Ireland at that particular time. Now, for me, the easiest way to remember is the word social means a group of people. So you need to focus on the behaviors of people that are shown in the novel okay so i would particularly look at um you know congregation of people or a family for example jack's mother so really what i would like you to do when you're thinking about social setting is to focus on questions as such okay what does the novel tell us about life during that period of time okay so always think about well, what does that tell us what is the show in us okay and the last one but not you know this list isn't exhaustive so there's quite a few other questions as well and what kind of people live there because i think once you kind of look at you know the the period of time or what life is like and then the people you can kind of put um everything else together so um, so today I'm going to focus three strands of social setting that I feel are most important. Okay, there's obviously other more such as religions and things like that. But I think these three strands that I will discuss are most important. So first strand I would like to discuss is class um, distinction. Ooh, before we go into that actually, very quickly I would like to uh, show you past exam questions and what they really want you to focus on. Now remember that this is not how they come up. Okay, this is me um rewriting them in a kind of neater way so for you that you'll be able to understand so the first one is what you liked or disliked about the social setting number two is what you found interesting about the social setting number three how social setting influences the characters and number four how a key moment not hey but a key moment can show how a character is influenced by the social setting so the most important thing for you here is to remember to include the key scenes from a novel and know them really well including quotes Okay, so now we'll discuss the three strands today, and the first strand is class distinction. Okay, so that means working class and also middle class. Now, a good place to start is to read chapter three and chapter eight again, but there are many other um, chapters that you should read in order to kind of remind yourself what happens in the novel, especially also um, chapter 12 and 13. So class distinction has a huge influence over Jack. He was brought up in a working class family who kind of struggles with money quite a lot. Okay. Now his family home is only a two-room cottage. Okay. Not not 
you know, two bedroom cottage, but two rooms really in there. Now his mother and father wanted him to escape the cycle of poverty, um, that of course they weren't able to escape, um, and to become a civil servant, which he kind of does in chapter 12 and 13, even though he doesn't really want to. So obviously you can see that that has a huge influence over him. Now, so we can see that even Jack's parents respect people who are rich a little bit more than others. So Jack's mother kind of goes to tea in a middle, middle class hotel or just hotel that would be quite posh and then comes back home to tell husband and child about this because to her it's kind of once in a lifetime outing okay and this happens in chapter three where she goes to um for tea with you know her ex-lover and his wife okay so we can see that but even um, obviously Nicholas gets very upset about this and it kind of starts telling her off but even he is no angel because really Nicholas Keyes is no better because he works for the Jacob family but when they eventually die the house is sold to another family and he isn't really particularly happy because he feels that they're too similar to him that meaning that they're almost working class even though they have a bit more money than him and therefore he doesn't enjoy working there anymore because he feels that the quality is gone so even he enjoys people or working for people who would be considered um quite classy quite posh so therefore he doesn't really like to work for his own kind as he says okay which is very interesting okay um, so even Chris, Jack's mother, mother's sister, is affected by class distinction, okay, you know, the social classes. So when Jack gets a uh, Windsor scholarship, she tells him to go to Presentation College because she feels the children who go there come from wealthier backgrounds, okay, so therefore she makes a decision about where he should go by looking at the type of people that go there and saying, actually, well, they're quite rich, so therefore Jack should be, um, you know, affiliated with people like that okay now jack is affected by this and so he can't escape the fact that he feels also uh, you know wants to belong to middle class um and this can be seen very clearly in chapter eight when he goes um to school on the first day and he leaves his father at train station in order not to be seen with him okay because he's, he's quite embarrassed the way he looks and he wants to make an impression and then of course what there's a child when his father does kind of follow him to school and stands outside the gate there is a child that says perhaps the old gentleman belongs to you to jack okay and the reason he says that because jack's father is waving goodbye to him and you know he can kind of see how poor you know his poor working clothes and kind of shabby appearance okay and therefore jack is embarrassed and ashamed and when the jack when the boys does say that maybe the old gentleman belongs to you, he does end up punching him and stand up for his father. But obviously he's quite embarrassed in this as well. So the next strand I feel is very, very important in the novel is education. Okay, and I feel it needs to be looked in detail in order to understand the novel better. So in 1926, the same year that Jack was born, the School Attendance Act made it compulsory for children aged between six and fourteen to attend school. So really after the age of 14 you weren't you didn't need to go and do anything else with your life you could begin to work as an apprentice or whatever else so really very few children went to secondary school because it wasn't compulsory and we can kind of see this in the novel so the scholarship that jack won set him apart from other children because not many other children would be or would have the money to go to you know to school after the age of 14. However, Jack doesn't really do well in school and he's kept back for several years, I think three years in fourth year in the same class until eventually his scholarship runs out. So you can see that he himself doesn't really have much interest in it. And perhaps this is the reason why. Okay, So Jack doesn't write about his school days with great love or admiration. He received numerous amounts of canings and also other people from his class and really a lot of he discussed describes a lot of beatings for really small offences okay maybe not putting up the hand or whatever else so therefore he doesn't really particularly write about it in a positive light he also didn't make any friends in school and he was very very glad to see the end of those days as i say or leaving the school so therefore that's quite important as well now my advice here is that you should always write about education in home before night if the question asks you if you would like to have lived and would like to have lived in this social setting okay because like, i think you have a lot to say there and especially if you read um chapter eight and chapter nine then you'd have a lot to say about what life was like um you know that social setting what education was like okay because it really wasn't inspiring and which child would like to say that yes 
you know, I would have liked to live there because that means I would get a beating. Okay, that is nonsense. So therefore, I think it's always a good start to write about education if they ask you to write about your personal opinion, if you would like to live there or not. Okay, now the last strand is family. Okay, and make sure that you read the first four chapters and underline ideas where you can see that family affects the social setting. So, as you know, large families were the norm in Ireland in 1920s and 30s. However, Jack is the only child and therefore he gets all the attention in his small family. Okay, now it's important to notice that Jack's mother was married off and she was only 17 years of age, and nobody in her family cared about her opinion whether she. Um, she loved the man or didn't. This is Nicholas Keyes. Okay. Now the reason why that was done is because obviously they wanted to get rid of an extra mouth to feed and an extra kind of body to clothe. So therefore, marrying off somebody quite young would mean that that person, that child, is no longer their problem. So that is, I think, something that is important to note. Okay. And as we can remember or we have read about, things were really hard in Ireland at that particular time. Lack of money meant that Jack was aware of. All the sacrifices his parents had to make for him. So, for example, when they had to buy him a suit um, and everything like that, you know, they didn't have that much money, but they always tried to look after him. Therefore, she was a loving, caring family. But because of this reason, you know, he, he understands that there's a lot of sacrifices. He gets talked into civil service, although it's not really what he wants to do in life. Okay, And he does this to please a lot of his uncles and aunts because they feel that um, being a social servant meant that you're going to be a middle class person. Okay, And obviously you want to make things easier on the family so you know he would have his own money and he wouldn't have um, asked them to buy clothing or food for him anymore. Okay, now I think another thing that you need to kind of look at is, um, you know, the Jack really struggles with his illegitimacy. Okay, and um, and his mother, whenever she's angry, she uses kind of against him, saying that if it's gonna be naughty, she's gonna give it back to um his, you know, birth mother. Now another thing that she does, she also gets sympathy from others when she says that he's adopted. And we can see that in chapter, um. 12 with Mr. Drum when she told the story of Jack being adopted and um, it's because she wanted to look good but also to feel other people to make kind of sad for Jack and therefore perhaps give him you know the benefits and for in this instance Mr. Drum perhaps giving a job to Jack. Now you have to remember that at this particular time you know adopting children was seen almost as a risk and there a lot of people were afraid to do that because they thought that child could turn out to be kind of negative influence or maybe even um, you know a murderer worst case scenario or somebody who wouldn't really fit in and also could be unhealthy which would mean that they would have to spend a lot of money to kind of make sure that he is healthy again and we can see in chapter two where um Jack's mother speaks to two girls on the train and she says that a lot of people said to Jack's mother that he'll turn on you so this would be kind of the views on the family that you know if he's not your own child you shouldn't adopt him because there's so many risks and so many worries about adopting somebody who's not one of your own if that makes sense okay so I think that's quite important and should be discussed as well and um, about the social setting so we reached the end of this screencast I hope that you enjoyed it and most importantly learn something um, also, please remember to visit my educational blog, which is gigantite.wordpress.com. It's called The Scholar, and it has all these kind of cool and funky videos. So if you want some more, you know, help with um, a little bishop the fish, it's on there, and other cool videos. Also, if you liked the video, then please do not hesitate to leave a comment. And I always, I'm always very happy to read all these nice comments. So hopefully this helped, um, and best of luck.